This machine right here can take your digitally recorded image and literally turn it into film. This isn't a Lightroom preset, nor is it a DaVinci plugin. This is literally physics and chemistry leading to a digital image being exposed onto motion picture film stock. Your favorite Hollywood movies are doing this to make their images look less digital and more organic. YouTube, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. The footage you're about to see was captured earlier this summer when I was still living in London. I went and visited CineLab, which is an amazing film facility in London that basically processes digital and analog footage for Hollywood movies, indie projects, music videos, etc. I actually did a whole facility tour video in the link above here. Go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. In the upcoming clips, you're gonna see a reel that was put together by CineLab to show off their digital to film to digital process. I actually recommend you go check out their Vimeo links so you can see this video in as high resolution as possible. YouTube's not that friendly to the grain in the scans, but Vimeo's definitely a bit better. Links are all down below. All right, let's get on with the video. Here's the CEO of CineLab, Adrian Bull, describing the full DTD process. So originally it was about shooting out a film to yep. make a, a negative that you could then make the prints from and also to create that archival negative. More recently, over the last few years, is this interest in taking content that's been acquired on digital source and recording it back to film yep. to create an authentic film look. Yeah. Um, and we did the modifications to this machine about a year ago, which allowed us to be able to shoot to original camera neg. The original camera neg is obviously much faster. It's much more sensitive than a DI neg, which yeah. can be really, really slow. Yeah. You're give. the film stock itself. The so the film stock one itself. Is slow film. Yeah. This is. This is a faster stock because this is a yeah. camera stock that could normally be shot yeah. at real real time. We can't shoot it any faster, necessarily okay. on the laser. It still takes time to, to record each image to yeah. the frame. But what we have is a really, really high neutral density filter yeah, yeah, yeah. in the optical path now that allows us to cut the power of the laser down enough so that we can actually ah. record it onto the camera negative film. But essentially what we get after we record onto this mm -hmm. is something that has the characteristics of original camera neg in terms of the grain yep. structure to it. So it's uniquely different on every frame of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. the film. It's a really weird phenomenon that happens <laughs> with it and that comes about from being able to scan it at high resolution as well. Yeah. So after we've recorded it out, what we'll normally do is scan it at 4K, that file will then go back to the client and that's what they'll get released. Yeah. Yeah. If you overlay grain that's in focus on top of an image, even with the image being slightly soft in the background, yeah it creates a visual perception that is more detail -led. Of course. So a really, really weird thing that happens in sort of highlights that otherwise are really easy to blow out with mm. digital capture. You know, if you shoot into the sky and you've got the sun clipping out and crushing that image, when you record it back to film, you put grain over the top of it that's uniquely different on, mm -hmm. on every frame. And you end up with something happening over the top of it that gives the visual perception that it's not necessarily as blown out yeah, as you yeah. think it was. Um, it's not magic. It can't put something back that wasn't there exactly. in the first place. But can it do a really, really good job of fooling the mind into thinking that it's not just a block of digital white with no detail in mm -hmm. it at all. And um, you know, we're doing a project at the moment where there's, you know, it's a period piece where you've got characters sitting in front sitting in front of a window with some neck curtains. And largely, the, the image is sort of blown out around the neck curtains with the light coming yeah. through it. And if you put grain over the top of it, it just puts a bit more interest back into it, and it looks, yeah. you know. So again, you know, if you're shooting a period piece, and you've not had the fortune to be able to shoot it on film in the first place, yeah. putting it through this process is a really, really good way of, of you know, of simulating that, that, um, that look. Um, so we do lots of commercials, music promos, and more features that are, that are, you know, taking a complete feature yeah, yeah. and shooting it back through this process um, to, to create a more authentic film look. Where it works also really well is if there's lots of visual effects oh, and compositing happening. Kind of just helps, so that like, stuff could never have happened for real. Yeah. You know, there's a big push at the moment for people trying to capture as much in camera as possible. Exactly. Um, which again is part of that thing of trying to make things look as authentic and real as possible, yeah. you know. Um, but if you can't and you have to have visual effects in it, mm -hmm. at the end of that process, 
of once it's all composited and conformed, to put it back through this process and end up with film grain over the top does a really good job of bedding in those effects exactly. to make it just look a bit more convincing. Real quick, nuclaxandfilm.com is now a full-blown web shop. We're carrying film from your favorite providers such as Kodak, Fuji, Ilford, etc. Our goal with this project is to offer film at the cheapest prices possible, so make sure to go check out the link. A few things are out of stock right now, but definitely sign up for the newsletter so you don't miss out when we have stock again. So what we have here is, on the left-hand side, we have a reel of... Um, this is actually original camera neg stock, so it's 5207, yep. which is uh, 250 day daylight um, camera neg stock. Um, the Arri laser effectively is a camera. Yep. Um, it's pin registered, so it advances the film a frame at a time. And the aperture here where the film's sitting in, it's mm -hmm. exposed by a red, green, and blue laser. Okay. So this is sort of similar technology to the printing machine yeah, yeah, that we saw yeah. just now, but this is about taking digital data and recording it back to film rather than taking it from a picture negative and recording it onto print stock. And effectively, there's a red, green, and blue laser that sit in, sit in the deck uh -huh. plate of this machine. There's loads and loads of mirrors. There's loads of prisms. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's modulated um, and deflected by a prism that rotates at very, very high speed. The noise of the compressor is the air that's fed into the bearings of that, of that um, spindle that's rotating at high speed. So there's no mechanical bearings in it. It's, oh, it's held literally... in air so that it can rotate really, really fast and be gotcha. almost frictionless. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's rotating um, a mirror that exposes each frame to a red, green, and blue laser yeah, that's yeah. modulated according to the digital image. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to lace this up because we're about to do a job with this. Um, so basically, anybody can reach out and say, we just edited our digital project. We want you to print it to film. Yeah, so historically what these were made for really was for making um, intermediate negatives that would have yeah. then gone into printing to make the prints that would have gone out to the cinema. Yeah. And if you imagine in the early days of what's now referred to as digital intermediate, where... Um, it was shot on film, yeah. it was scanned, it went through a digital intermediate process, typically at 2K resolution yeah. at that stage. At the end of that process, it would, you'd have a digital conformed file that was all graded, yeah. and we would take that data and record it back to film. This would become the master negative that then all the prints were made from. Yeah. Um, there were two advantages, um, as well as it being able to, to make the prints that would then go into cinema distribution, this would become the master archival neg that would go into the vault, yeah. and this would become effectively the picture reference for that film. Um, so I've just basically laced this up. When it's actually running, it's going to advance a frame at a time, and yeah. each time it advances, it will be stationary in the gate, and then it'll expose a single frame. It takes typically around two to three seconds per frame wow, to, okay. to shoot this. Um, so if you're doing a, a, a 30 second commercial. So a 30 second commercial will take in the region of half an hour, 45 minutes okay. to record back to film. Yeah. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. This is really cool stuff and I absolutely love that CineLab is doing this. And every time I see anything on TV now that looks like it's got a little hint of film, I wonder, did they actually shoot it on film or did they do one of these DTD processes? If you enjoyed the video, click that like button below, of course, and definitely subscribe to the channel. What are you waiting for? All right, y'all, to the next one. I'm out.